Hi, my name is Crystal Fletcher. This week on All About Canadian Books, my guest is Nicole Luongo, and she's here to read from her memoir, The Becoming. But before she reads, um, love to ask Nicole, there are so many individuals out there who want to write a memoir, but, you know, just can't get started. What writing tips would you have for future memoir writers, Nicole? Um. Yeah, I mean, I just, for my first draft of the book, just kind of wrote relentlessly. Um, yeah. I was also in a bit of a unique place where I could do that uh, without too many external demands interfering, but I kind of made a very loose commitment that I would write every day without telling myself for how many hours or how many pages I needed to write. I just needed to look at it every day, and more often than not, that, that would snowball. Um, I suppose another recommendation I would have is uh, to be prepared to uh, radically alter what you've done. Um, this, this book went through, I guess, three rounds of like massive revisions. And, you know, while I was completing the first draft, I thought it was brilliant. And then I looked back six months later and hated it. Yeah. Um, and quite literally we wrote the entire thing. So, you know, every, obviously one becomes very attached to their work. Yeah. Um, so just, yeah, pay heed to the fact that you might need a little bit of time away from it to be able to review it with uh, some, some less emotional activation. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and what about also kind of along the same lines for people who are shy about putting, putting, being vulnerable and putting their life out there? What would, what would you say to people about that? Yeah, I would say that's very fair. And uh, to seriously evaluate the potential consequences of what you are disclosing. I mean, I've disclosed a lot and I've been aware of that throughout. And for me, you know, uh, doing a cost benefit analysis, the, the potential benefits have outweighed the potential drawbacks because it has felt so life and death. But yeah, um, think, think hard about it. And uh, if you do decide to include things that are maybe evoking some unease, um, remember why, why you've done so, I suppose. As someone who's read uh, Nicole's memoir, it is, it is incredibly honest and brave. And I was so appreciative of your vulnerability and, uh, you know, it just makes us all realize that we all navigate the world in a different way. And I think that was a really beautiful thing for you to share. So thank you. And on that note, um, Nicole is going to share an excerpt from her novel. And before you start, may I ask why you've chosen this specific excerpt? Um, I mean, there are a lot of transitions in the book this one in particular is quite important in the sense that I was you know in hospital and just becoming aware that I was in a very altered state yeah. uh, and I think it lays a bit of groundwork for what is to come okay okay thank you yeah no problem all right Keelan hugged me when his girlfriend arrived and I was left with Gretel she was younger than me. She joked loudly and often, and we were later recognized parallels, parallels that weren't funny in our respective family dynamics. It was at this point, for the first time since I'd been at the Priory, I called myself psychotic. I had entered an altered state, and it was the same state I had been in almost exactly two years earlier, the night I sent the letter. Only this time, I had been psychotic for days and had been too frightened, fractured, and fragmented to notice. Then all at once, as though struck by lightning, I could not notice. Gretel was aghast. She stood, said we were getting help and led me inside and directly to a consultant. When she knocked, a slight pale man answered and looked me up and down quizzically. Standing beside her, I watched Gretel convey dismay as she explained I was Nicole. I was not part of her or any program and I was psychotic. The consultant seemed bored. Speaking to Gretel, he informed her I would have to do as every patient did which was wait for a scheduled meeting with my consultant, at which point I could discuss psychosis with him. He had his own caseload, he sniffed, making it apparent as he wiped the lenses of his glasses and finally turned toward me, that he was inconvenienced. Stunned, Gretel raised her voice, insistent, and she was reprimanded for being untoward, too emotive and too loud, presumably for a woman who was also labeled a drunk. I didn't know it at the time, but this benefited me greatly. Had the consultant behaved professionally, 
Had he, for instance, inquired about my symptoms, I might have been medicated and monitored. Instead, the consultant, the care aides, and the half dozen other staff we approached following the consultant all told me the same thing. I wasn't really a patient and could seek treatment after I'd gotten to Canada. Gretel, Gretel grew more furious with each successive denial, but my temper, temperament, though mercurial, stayed dormant throughout. The stone walling would continue, so I thanked Gretel and retreated to my room. It was here that I started writing. There was no employee to turn to. There was no one who cared to diagnose me, drug me, tell me who I was, what this meant, and what I could or should do next. There were only the Nicoles colliding. For much of my stay, I would write spontaneously, only when I saw my laptop. When I entered my room in any given state, noticed it, and remembered I even had one. The moment I was finished, I would forget what I had said until I next sat down, reawakening the Nicole who relies on documentation. I had sensed this coming, and now the words arrived in a powerful, powerful, dramatic, painful flood. Looking back, the writing I did then is shocking. It is caustic, forceful, and combative. It is timid, diffident, and meek. Unlike academic prose, which is enjoyable but obligatory, writing at the Priory was cathartic possibly divine. It was also my only anchor. Tangible proof I still existed and was, despite my confusion, panic, and memory loss, Nicole's. The first piece I wrote, all of which I still have, saved in the folder I named Accidental Insider slash The Becoming, reads, I am so frightened. I've been trapped inside a carnival funhouse maze for days, with no one at the fairgrounds to hear my screams. The staff are here, but they are all tending to the paying customers. Meanwhile, I have snuck in unannounced. Now that I wish to go, wish to leave this revolting nightmare, none are willing to see me out. I will find the exit myself. Thank you so much, Nicole. That was Nicole yeah. Luongo reading from her memoir, The Becoming. I'll put links down below so viewers can purchase a copy of her novel. Thank you for being a guest on the program, Nicole. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. My pleasure, my pleasure. And thank you everyone else for watching.